Hello, and welcome back to Chapter 4. Today we're going to look at the chain rule in Section 2.4. This will be a two-part video, so in today's video we are going to look at finding the derivative of composite functions using a chain rule and finding the derivative of a function using the general power rule. We'll look at simplifying derivatives and chain rules and trig functions in Part 2. So let's look at what the chain rule is. The chain rule is one of the most powerful differentiation rules that you're going to learn. It essentially deals with composite functions, but it's also going to add some variety to the rules that we've already talked about in the previous two sections. Now if we look at this table down below, these are functions that you can take the derivatives of without a chain rule. Once we go to take a derivative of something that looks like these, we can no longer use the rules that we've learned so far. We have to use something that has a little bit more complexity to it. Uh, and therefore, we have to use a chain rule in something like this. Now, this is the book definition for your chain rule. It says, if y is some function equal to f of u, and it's a differentiable function of u, and u is equal to some other function called g of x, which is also differentiable, then we say that y is equal to f of g of x, which this is a composite function, and is a differentiable function of x. So if we want to find the derivative of y, we're really going to have to take the derivative of y with respect to u, and then multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay? So you have another equivalent form of that right there, but I think for me the easiest way to see this is if I go and I write y is equal to some function f and then we're going to take and we're going to make that a composite function so f of g of x and this is going to equal our function f of u. So essentially what we've done is we have what we call our outer functions. So this is our outer function. And this right here is our inner function. So if you think about this in terms of outers and inner functions, then to find the derivative, before we do that, let's just reiterate that y is equal to the function f of u. So if we want to find the derivative y prime, y prime is really equal to the derivative of the outside stuff, or f prime of u, times the derivative of the inside, or u prime. Now we are going to do a few examples, so if it doesn't make sense yet, just give it a few minutes. Before we go ahead and start doing examples, I want you to identify the functions that are within a function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at example one, and we're going to identify what our u piece is, or u equals the g of x from the previous um, slide's notation. And then once we've done that, then we're going to go and identify what the y function is, or the y equals f of u. So, if we start out with this first piece here, the piece that's being plugged into a parent type function is this x plus 1. So, I'm going to say that u is equal to x plus 1. Well, what am I plugging x plus 1 into? We're really plugging x plus 1 into some y function that is 1 divided by x. So, in other words, I'm going to take this stuff here and plug it into this function. This is my outer function, this is my inner, because this is what I'm plugging in for every x to generate this right here. Likewise, with part b, our inner function, or u, is equal to 2x. What are we plugging 2x into to get sine of 2x? Well, we're going to plug that into y equals sine x. Same thing for part C.
And I do apologize. I probably should go back and replace. These are not x's, but rather u's. Since our function is in terms of u's. Okay, now for this third one, I have y equals tan squared x. So in this case, I really have my inner function, which is going to be what's being squared. Remember that tan squared x is really the tangent of x, and we're squaring that. So u is really equal to, t to the tangent of x, which means my parent function is really y equals u squared. So these are kind of our inner and outer pieces. These here are inner functions that are being plugged into the outer functions. Now that's going to help us here with example two, where we have to find dy dx, or the derivative, for y equals the quantity of x squared plus one squared. Now our outer function here is going to be, and if you want to, you can say that our u value is really equal to x squared plus one, and our y value is really equal to u squared. So to start out with, we have to take the derivative of our outer stuff. So the derivative of our outer stuff is going to be like taking the derivative of u squared. To take the derivative of u squared, we're going to take and go 2 times our u stuff, which is the x squared plus 1, and I'm going to raise that to the 2 minus 1 power. So this is all for y prime. Then I have to multiply that by the derivative of my u, which is this right here. So I'm going to multiply that by u, or the derivative of u, which is 2x. So now if I simplify this, I really have 2 times 2x is going to give me 4x times x squared plus 1 to the first power. And this here would be your final derivative. So you're going to take the derivative of the outside, multiply it by the derivative of the inside. We do have a special case of a chain rule, and it's called the general power rule. And the general power rule um, is one of the most common types of composite functions that you're going to encounter. And it says that if y is equal to some function being raised to a power, which is kind of what we just had in the last example, where u is a differentiable function of x and n is a rational number, then we can take the exponent, pull it down up front, and raise it to the power of n minus 1, and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is exactly what we just did in that last example. So let's go ahead and look at example 3, where it says that we're going to find the derivative of f of x, when f of x is equal to 3x minus, so 3x minus 2x squared, and this should all be the quantity of, and that's all going to be to the third power. So if I want to find f prime of x, I'm going to take the derivative of my outside stuff. Now your outside stuff is that binomial being raised to the third power. So to take the derivative of the outside, I'm going to bring this 3 down up front. So I have 3 times the quantity, and the inside stuff stays the same. So it's 3x minus 2x squared. And I'm going to have to subtract 1 from my exponent. So I have 3 minus 1, which is 2. So now I just took the derivative of the outside. Now I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside is the 3x minus 2x squared, so the derivative of 3x is 3, and I still have minus, the derivative of 2x squared is going to give me 4x. So now I end up with 3 times a quantity of 3x minus 2x squared, and that quantity squared, multiply by 3 minus 4x. And remember, you can go ahead and leave it just like this. You don't have to simplify. If you wanted to, you could probably distribute the 3 onto those two pieces, but you don't have to FOIL everything out. I would actually just leave it right here. Now, example 4 says, to find the derivative of all points of f of x for which f prime of x equals 0 and for which f prime of x does not exist. 
So essentially what we're trying to find is when your slope is equal to zero and when your slope does not exist. So let's start out by finding the derivative of our function. So f prime of x is going to equal, and actually I'm going to rewrite this as the quantity of x squared minus 1. Now this is being squared and then raised to the third power, or I'm sorry, the one-third power. And if you remember, something that's being squared and then raising to the one-third power, I can take my exponents here and multiply them. So let me write this over here. This is really going to give me x squared minus 1 to the two-thirds power. Now I, w I prefer it to be written like that because it's going to be easier for me to find the derivative of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, pull it down up front. So that's going to give me two-thirds times the quantity of x squared minus 1, and I'm going to raise that to the 2 thirds power minus 1, or a negative 1 third. So now I just took the derivative of the outside, then I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is just 2x. So now if I simplify this, this gives me 4x divided by 3, times x squared minus 1 raised to the negative one-third power. Remember, a negative exponent means that it's really in the denominator. So I really end up with 4x divided by 3 times, I'm going to just convert this over to a root function. So I have the third root of x squared minus 1. So for part A, when f prime of x equals 0, I'm going to take that function that I just found right here and set it equal to 0. So we end up with 4x divided by 3 times the cube root of x squared minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to multiply everything by this denominator here to clear it out of the denominator. So that's going to give me... 4x equals 0, or x equals 0. So when x equals 0, my derivative will also equal 0. To find when my function does, or my slope or derivative does not exist, I'm going to take my function, or I'm going to look at the denominator of my fun, or derivative, which is right here, and set that equal to 0 and solve. So I really end up with, and this is when f prime of x does not exist. So I'm going to take that or denominator, so 3 times the cube root of x squared minus 1. We're going to set that equal to 0. So I'm going to divide by 3. So we have the cube root of x squared minus 1 equals 0, because 0 divided by 3 is still 0. Then I'm going to cube everything to undo the cube root. So now I have x squared minus 1 equals 0. And then to solve, this is going to give me x squared equals 1, or x equals plus or minus 1. So when x equals either a positive or negative 1, my function, or the derivative, will not exist. And the last example that we're going to look at today says to differentiate g of t, which is equal to a negative 7, divided by the quantity of 2t minus 3 squared. And just like, uh, I think it was in section 2, 2, when we were rewriting power, or using the power rule, I would go ahead and rewrite this. I would rewrite this as a negative 7 times the quantity of 2t minus 3 raised to the negative second power. It's going to make it a little bit easier to take the derivative of it. So now if we go and calculate the derivative, we'll say g prime of t is equal to, I'm going to bring this down up front, so negative 7 times a negative 2 will give us a positive 14 times a quantity of 2t minus 3. Now negative 2 minus 1 will give me a negative 3. Then I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is just 2. 
So I end up with 28 times the quantity of 2t minus 3 to the negative third power. Now to simplify, I'm going to rewrite that as 28 divided by the quantity of 2t minus 3 cubed. And this here is our final answer. And that will conclude part one video. We'll wrap up the rest of this stuff tomorrow with part two. Have a good night.